Well, Commander, our uh, Captain Gus Grissom is aboard the USS Randolph now, undergoing the first of uh, many and very thorough and detailed medical examinations that he will be given in the next 24 to 36 hours. Here's Colonel John Powers. Grissom has set foot aboard the deck of the USS Randolph. Well, that's the information that you As got you yourself heard, a moment ago there from are some the Randolph. People here in the Mercury Control Center who are very, very happy. I'll repeat what happened downrange in the pickup area. We know that the helicopter attempted the pickup of the Mercury spacecraft. We know that Virgil Gus Grissom got aboard the helicopter. We also know that some kind of malfunction occurred. The spacecraft was dropped in the ocean and sank. And this is John Powers in the Mercury Control Center signing off at this time. Well, well thank you so much, Colonel John Powers. All the newsmen call him Shorty Powers because he's an extremely gregarious and happy sort of fellow, a pilot himself, and extremely easy to get along with, very cooperative, and has been of enormous benefit to us as well as you on both of these space flights. We don't know all the details, of course, not yet, but we do know that something happened and that they lost the capsule. Uh, my own communications was not entirely clear. I couldn't hear correspondent Batchelder aboard the USS Randolph too clearly. But from what I can make out, uh, some sort of a leak uh, sprang in the, uh, in the capsule, in the water. They got the uh, astronaut Grissom out. They once had the capsule itself hooked and possibly lifted a few feet above the water, and then they lost it. It dropped back onto the water and then went under the water. Um, we had uh, television cameras aboard the USS Randolph. If you'll remember the last time, we ran into a bit of bad luck trying to make film of the recovery operations. We're never able to show that to you. We had TV cameras aboard this time, and as far as I know, they got pictures of that very exciting and dramatic uh, other end of the shoot way out in the Atlantic around, around Bahama Island. And uh, with a bit of luck, if we got the pictures, we'll have those on for you later in the day. And we're not through here yet because there's a great deal more information that we want to get from down there. But right now, here is a message from Gulf. And speaking for Gulf, Whitfield Connor. Man's need to top his best has never let him sit back and say, I've nothing more to do. Take missiles. The primary missile fuel to date is a petroleum product, kerosene. However, if there is a higher energy fuel to be found, Gulf aims to find it through its affiliate, the Calorie Chemical Company. For that story, here is Calorie's Albert J. Toring. What does a chemist do to make a more energetic fuel? First, he turns to the table of all the known elements. He looks up combinations of those elements that are known to have high energy. He visualizes new combinations that will put more energy into a smaller package. In his laboratory, he creates a new molecule. He tests his creation on a small scale. And if that's successful, he calls in a chemical engineer to develop a process to produce this material on a big scale. When they are ready, they build a production plant. This one now produces a fuel that pound for pound will give one and a half times the energy of conventional missile fuels. It's liquid pentaborane, a tremendous step closer to the ultimate in usable chemical energy. Whether it's pentaborane or Gulf kerosene, Gulf's dedicated purpose is to develop more and better energy for whatever the work there is to be done. To recap briefly, we have had a second successful launching of an American astronaut. Obviously not as successful as the first one because the capsule itself was lost in the recovery operation, but successful in its most important and critical area. The astronaut himself, Air Force Captain Virgil Grissom, was recovered, is now aboard the USS Randolph in the Atlantic and will soon be steaming toward Grand Bahama Island. He is undergoing the first of his medical examinations. Correspondent aboard the carrier said that he seemed to be, from just a visual observation, walking from a helicopter into the captain's quarters in good condition. We hope to have more information for you as time goes on and what actually went wrong and why they were unable to recover the capsule itself. Right now, let's check in with our anchor man at Cape Canaveral, Pete Hackus, and see what he can tell us about things that happened during the launch and maybe have some new information for us. Peter? Uh, Frank, uh... We've just had a report from the carrier, the first report on the condition of Gus Grissom, that uh, he appears to be in good physical shape. Of course, we'll hear refinements of that as time goes along. Um, what I started to say was, uh, even though this is the second time around, and we all thought we knew what we were expecting, the tension here was still, I think, just as great as before. 
the feeling, I think, uh, subconsciously being everything went so well the first time, uh, there were, it was a, a, a sort of a back of the mind feeling that perhaps something might go wrong. Nobody was saying it, nobody was really uh, looking for it, but uh, it was the uh, kind of thing that we had thought possibly might take place unconsciously, and a great relief, of course, here when nothing did. The uh, picture on your screen now, if you can see it, Frank, is the remainder of Pad 5, from which point uh, Gus Grissom took off this morning. Doesn't it, look nearly as awesome now as it did a few moments ago, does it, Pete? That's the launch ring from which the entire vehicle took off. It, as you say, it looks a little bit uh, uh, less imposing than it did just before the flight. I might add one thing. You uh, did hit an interesting point in that the flight, I think, cannot be considered nearly as successful. We have lost a, an immensely valuable part of this thing in, the, in losing the capsule itself. Well, the, Pete, uh, uh, excuse me, Pete, don't you imagine there will be a uh, considerable effort made to recover that capsule? Uh, Frank, I think all the efforts will surely be made, but how you can go down uh, in the middle of the ocean or even at the edge of the ocean and pick that up is something I can't see. Mm -hmm. They may make an attempt. I'm sure they have scuba divers and what all uh, there, but this is uh, something that uh, sinks in about uh, half a second yeah. and at uh, tremendous depth. Uh, inside, of course, we do have, uh, we hope anyway, uh, indications of good uh, telemetry and good readings from inside the capsule here at Mercury Control. Pete, let me clear up one thing. I, as I tried to explain a while ago, I couldn't hear too well, uh, Batchelder down on the Randolph. Um, did, did, did the information that you have there, and don't commit yourself if you don't know, uh, did the capsule spring a leak on landing in the water? Was that what happened, or have you been able to find out yet? Frank, uh, our information here is just about as sketchy as yours. Mm. Uh, I just don't know exactly what happened. It could be that one of the uh, hooks uh, slipped out, uh, one of the rings uh, slipped out, and uh, or perhaps the uh, cable separated. We're not quite sure exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. But inside the capsule was a wealth of information on this flight. For example, uh, there were two cameras aboard. Yeah. Uh, color film, a special high-speed color, which gave them 50% more film this time than last time. Mm -hmm. One of them was focused on... Uh, uh, Gus Grissom's face. Uh, you remember the uh, film we had in color of the Shepard flight. This was a duplicate of that. The other camera was a, had a twofold purpose. It was focused on the instrument panel itself. Uh, and uh, uh, pardon me, the, the, the camera that was focused on his face was also focused on the panel by way of that reflecting mirror you saw strapped to his uh, space suit. Yeah. So that, uh, that's lost, plus the other camera, which was a straight shot in color of the instrument panel itself. That is lost. All of the instrumentation is gone, and there were onboard tape recorders as well. Now, this is not uh, crucial. I think the flight can certainly be called a success, but I'm sure that the people connected with NASA and the Mercury program are bitterly disappointed. Well, I'm sure they are, but at the same time, Pete, uh, an awful lot of the information from that would have been aboard the capsule uh, has been radioed back to um, to the control center there oh, where yes. the capsule was in flight, so they would have uh, yeah, one end of it, they'd have a duplicate of it back there, but still in all, it's a sizable loss, and I'm sure, as you say, they must be disappointed. Um, I. I found I had a hard time convincing myself, even though we've done this once and this is the second time, I had to make a, a conscious mental effort to convince myself again that there was actually a man uh, on, on top of that thing when it took off. That's always a, a hard thing to realize, and it, uh, once again here, incidentally, uh, we had uh, the ripple of applause uh, that we had last time, 350 people here at the press site, uh, hard-bitten reporters who've covered uh, wars and what have you, uh, standing by, very tense, uh, perspiring freely. It's not exactly chilly here. And uh, as soon as the word came that there was a successful touchdown, uh, there was a considerable outburst of applause here and a great relief on the part of everyone. Well, sure, I know we, we can regret the loss of the instrumentation and some of the information aboard the capsule. Uh, and I don't mean to suggest that scientists are just as concerned with the Virgil Grissom as we are. Of course they are. But we can perhaps take their loss of information with uh, more equanimity than they can. And what we're really happy about is that Gus Grissom got out of it and uh, is aboard the carrier. We hope to have more information as time goes on on what happened down there and uh, maybe a little more detailed report on Gus Grissom's condition.